Welcome to Bizjet TV, my name is Fabrizio Poli. Today we're going to be talking about an accident that happened in 1977 with a crash uh, which killed some of the members of the Leonard Skinnerd uh, rock band. And uh, this has uh, been uh, suggested by one of you, um, uh, fans of uh, Bizjet TV, to have a look at this accident. So we'll be looking into it. It's the crash of a Convair CV240. A very interesting case which does lead us to a number of uh, discussions which we'll be having in this uh, episode of Bizjet TV. So let's get straight into it. into the accident here that killed some of the members of the Leonard Skinnerd um, rock group there were 26 people on the airplane six people died uh, the both pilots died and uh, three members of the band and then one of their managers got killed uh, in the crash so this airplane uh, the accident happened on the 20th of October 1977 the airplane was flying between Greenville South Carolina and Baton Rouge it had been leased by the Leonard Skinnerd for uh, a number of weeks for their tour uh, interestingly enough, uh, the the band leader, uh, Ronnie Van Zant, uh, perished in the crash. Um, it's interesting to note that he'd always been saying to his father and other people that he didn't think he was going to live uh, beyond the age of 30. For some reason, he just thought, you know, I think my time on earth is going to be up, up to then. Um, and the other thing is that when the crash happened, he didn't have his seatbelt on. Now, a little warning here to those of you that are watching that obviously travel on airplanes. Uh, being a pilot myself... Um, and I always recommend that you keep your seat belt fastened at all times. Of course, if you have to get up to, for a quick walk or have to go to the restroom or the washroom or the toilet, whatever you want to call it, and then of course you, you, you're out your seat. But when you are in your seat, keep that seat belt on at all times. There are a number of private jet passengers that because they're on their own airplane, they think they don't need to fasten their seat belt. Well, if I'm the captain, you're going to fasten your seat belt or we're not going anywhere. Because at the end of the day, it's, 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 your safety is important. You know, and something can happen, you know, and we want to make sure that you're safe. My job is to keep you safe. So that's really, really important. So um, the airplane, uh, at a certain point, it basically ran out of fuel. And as it ran out of fuel, one engine stopped, then the other one stopped, and the pilots had to crash land the airplane. As the, the, the airplane hit the ground, it broke into three pieces, and uh, uh, the leader of the band was basically thrown out of his seat and hit a tree and died on impact so that's what happened there so uh, let's look at uh, what happened here and some of the dynamics that happened before the 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 actual incident or accident the Aerosmith actually had uh, the aircraft inspected a few weeks before because they were they were looking for an aircraft for their tour and so they had their flight operations guy go around and, and check the aircraft. And as they were doing that, the two pilots were there. The pilots that actually died in the crash that were flying the Linus Skinner. And they were there and they were drinking some whiskey. Um, and they obviously weren't impressed with the pilots. They weren't impressed with the maintenance of the aircraft. The aircraft was a 30-year-old airplane. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with a 30-year-old airplane as long as it's maintained well. But bear in mind, you know, like an older car, an older airplane needs more maintenance, which costs money which also means it's going to be on the ground a lot more uh, because, you know, it's going to have more faults. And so it needs to be maintained well. In particular, if the airplane has changed hands a number of times, every time it, it lands into a new company's hands, that airplane will be managed in a different way. Uh, while if the airplane has been with, with one owner only and that owner's looked after it, um, then, you know, chances are it's in better condition. So it was an older airplane, wasn't maintained well, and also the pilots were a bit, you know, uh, didn't seem like they were they, they were very good so uh, the NTSB which did the investigation uh, listed on the uh, accident report engine malfunction of undetermined nature and the fuel gauges were faulty and the pilots had neglected to manual check the fuel tanks so um, there was probably uh, a disconnect there between the fuel gauge and what was actually in the airplane so the fact they ran out of fuel, obviously they didn't have enough fuel or alternatively there had been a fuel leak. But even with a fuel leak, the pilot should have been checking on their log to make sure that, you know, that the, the fuel corresponded to uh, the, the time they'd been in the air. This is something as airline pilots we do all the time. We always check for fuel leak. Um, so you check the fuel, you say, OK, at this point we should have so many gallons of fuel on board. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, no, we don't. Uh, let's keep monitoring that. Make sure that there's not a fuel leak. Um, and that's something but you know obviously these pilots weren't doing that 
So they ran out of fuel and the plane crashed and unfortunately six people died. Now the other interesting fact about this accident, and this is why you know we brought this case up, was the lease contract between the owner of the of the aircraft and the Lynn Skinner. Now the lease contract was drafted out where it was putting all the responsibility of the operation of the aircraft on to the Lynn Skinner. Now, which included maintenance and also the pilots and the training of the pilots. Now, the Linus Skinner are a rock band. What do they know about aviation? What do they know about pilots and airplanes and, and whatnot? Uh, but if we look at the Aerosmith, the Aerosmith had their own director of flight operations, who they sent out to inspect the aeroplane with their engineer, and they wrote a report and they said, nah, this is not going to be a safe aeroplane. Let's not take it. So they didn't take it. The Nid Skinner just went along, they signed their contract, whoever they did, their manager signed this contract, and um, and, and off they went. So uh, if you are going to lease an aircraft, um, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you've got a good lawyer, and the lawyer drafts up the lease documents in the right way, that you check to see who's going to be responsible. If you're going to have the responsibility of, of operating the aircraft, make sure you hire someone that is that knows aviation that you know that's a pilot engineer you know hire a team of people that can you know properly manage the aircraft for you because what you don't want to do is you don't want to end up in hiring the wrong pilots uh, or you know not doing the maintenance not keeping it up to date or if there's anything wrong with the airplane not getting it fixed and fixed quickly and fixed properly these are all important elements when you operate an aircraft you know safety is number one it's the most important thing i mean we always say that you know people use private jets to save time yes but you know if you don't get to your destination because you crashed and killed a few of your team members in the meantime well then what's the point so you know aircraft need to be operated pro properly um now the other th interesting thing about this accident uh, and we've just recently seen uh, another celebrity killed in an accident kobe bryant the american basketball player in his helicopter uh, now, there's a, a long list of celebrities that have been killed in air crashes, whether it's been in a private jet or it's been in a private helicopter. There's quite a long list of people, um, you know, Buddy Holly, um, Kobe Bryant, the Leonard Skinner, um, you know, and, and, and a number of others. If you just Google it, you'll see there's, there's just a, a long, long list. So one needs to ask the question, why is it that so many celebrities die in air crashes? Well, the fact is that, you know, some of these celebrities, they just, this success goes to their head. And so they then start to push the pilots to land when they're not supposed to land, to do stuff they're not supposed to do. You know, oh, let's just fly low level over my grandma's house or my girlfriend's house. And then they crash into a tree. Um, or, you know, it's foggy. We can't land. Oh, don't care. We have to land. I've got a meeting. I um, mean, I remember, you know, I mean, I got pushed once um, and, you know, it was borderline and you can see the video click on the link above about when I almost crash, crashed a, a citation in summer it's in the Swiss Alps another time uh, was flying along and we had this celebrity and we were in in a storm and we were supposed to again fly to San Moritz uh, but the weather was so bad that we we, we decided we were going to divert to Milan now she wasn't happy with it she was shouting and hollering insulting us in the back uh, she was complaining about everything, this woman. I mean, it was just uh, unbelievable. Uh, but, you know, we just didn't listen. Um, we thought, you know, it's not safe. So we're going to land in Milan. We ordered a car for her. And she even complained on the colour of the car. She wasn't happy with it. Uh, but, you know, we didn't allow ourselves to be pushed by the passenger. Uh, she never flew with us again. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're alive to tell the story. So, you know, if you are looking at leasing a private jet or buying a private jet, obviously you are successful because not everybody has the level of wealth to be able to do that. Um, and you do hire pilots and engineers and someone to manage the aircraft for you. Don't go cheap on these people. Make sure you hire good people and good people cost money and let them do their job. They're professionals. Let them get on with it. And if they tell you it's not safe, if they tell you, no, the aircraft, we're still waiting for the spare part. We can't fly the airplane as it is. We have to wait another day. You have to wait another day. What you don't want to do is, you know, launch in the air. Uh, and put yourself into a situation which could cause an accident. And as I always say, there's never one reason why an accident happens. Even in this case of the Lynn Skinner accident on the Convair CV240, it was a number of situations, you know, from the lease contract to the maintenance of the aircraft to the pilots, um, you know, the training of the pilots probably as well, put that into, into the mix. You know, there's a number of factors, like in every accident. So um, that's what happened there. So there's lots of things we can learn from the accident of the Linus Skinner aircraft. Uh, fortunately, you know, 20 people did walk away um, and uh, out of the 26. And that was due to the fact that the plane had run out of fuel. 
So when it did crash, it didn't blow up because there was no fuel left. Otherwise, it would have blown up on impact and killed everybody. So anyway, lots of learning points from here. I hope this was of use to you. And if you haven't subscribed to BizJet TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and uh, give us a thumbs up and comments below, please. We'd love to hear from you and any suggestions you may have. In fact, this video is a result of a suggestion of one of you. Thank you. Um, I would like to also encourage you to look at the other videos on this channel. And also, as a lot of you have been asking me about my books behind me and asking me to um, uh, do some videos about the books, we have launched another channel called Quantum Action. You can click on the video here and go to the Quantum Action uh, channel where you'll see me talk about a number of things, but also have some interesting guests talk about their business experience and, and other things and talking about the action cube and that. So I encourage you to, to, to go over there and have a look and subscribe to that channel too. Uh, so that's all from Fabrizio Poli here on BizJet TV and I'll see you on the next one.